Edwin Diaz, a very controversial contract because you don't want to play pay closers, but Edwin Diaz had one of the best years we've ever seen from a closer. So what do you think his money will be like, and do you think the Mets will be the team that pays him? Um, I Yes, I do think the Mets will be the team that pays him. Like Sunday night in the aftermath of the loss, I mean, Diaz essentially said that he hoped the Mets came to him quickly because he wants to do what's best for his family, and there was clearly an interest there. And then there were reports coming from Mets Marais that Mets don't even want him to reach the agency at the conclusion of the World Series. So I do think he's going to stick with the Mets. Uh, I do think um, with the Mets' inconsistent bullpen over the last few years, I mean, really, outside of 2019, Diaz has been one of their most valuable relief pitchers, uh, like it or not. I mean, this year ob- was obvious, but even the last couple of years before that, he's he's been great since that terrible 2019. Um, and he's got Narco. They want to keep the trumpets at City Field. That's an entertainment yeah. value, too. But, I mean, I think he's probably going to get – he's going to challenge Chapman's record, which is, I think, like 586. So, I mean, he's probably going to get somewhere around, like, you know, four or five years, $18, $19 million per the year. The clock Probably. is ticking. He said it. He told the Mets the clock is ticking. <laughs> yeah, and, like, if, if they sign him now, if they don't have to get into any kind of, like, bidding war. That's who they want. <laughs> and it seems like it's clearly it's who they want. So, I mean, it, it, they can, you know, set the market themselves. They can, you know, they already have the relationship with Diaz. Uh, one of the things that Cohen did this year was he would just sporadically invite players back to his house for dinner and stuff to kind of, like, cultivate more relationship. Um, so there's probably a little bit of rapport there too. So, I mean, you know, and everyone knows what he's worth and, and he's younger than all these other closers have gotten these big money deals too. So, uh, so he's going to get a lot of money. If he doesn't pass that $86 million mark, he's going to get close. Here's the pitchers that are available this off season. Trevor Bauer. <laughs> no, thank God, you. God, no. David Price. <laughs> also, God, no. Chris Sale. Justin Ooh. Verlander. Carlos Rodon. Noah Syndergaard, Adam Wainwright, Clay Kers- Clayton Kershaw, Nathan Avaldi, which could be a, a nice pickup for the Mets, Zach Greinke, Carlos Carrasco, Aaron Nola, Sonny Gray, uh, Luis Savarino could, could be a guy that they might be interested in, um, um, Sean Mania, uh, Kyle Gibson, Mike Miner, Chris Bassett, Andrew Heaney, Corey Kluber, Tyler Anderson, Jake or Dorsey or Dorosey, whatever his name is, uh, Walker, uh, Wade Miley, Jordan Lyles. I mean, all the big names we've pretty much na- mentioned. I feel like it's kind of like Slim Pickens there. I wouldn't mind Sonny Gray. I was one of the people who thought he'd be a good get in a trade with Eugenio Suarez uh, from when they were both on the Reds, which mm-hmm. would have been interesting. I know it's a whole like the whole New York thing, but I mean, I think that could be a little bit overblown. Well, City think, Field's yeah, a bigger, it's a big, bigger field. I think, I think his stuff would play a bit better. Yeah. He knows him a little bit more too. So I mean, I think that would be interesting. Tyler Anderson, Anderson would be interesting as well too. It seems like there's a lot of Justin Verlander. Is, why not? I mean, well, yeah, I'm, the, the Mets scouted <laughs> Verlander when he held a workout before he signed with the Astros yeah. last year. So I mean, why there's not? an interest there. But then again, it's it's kind of the same problem as you know bringing jake back although even more of a problem i mean it isn't verlander in his 40s he's got to be in his 40s 39 now, right? yeah he'll be 40 next year but, but he had a better season than practically half these pitches well, yeah he, <laughs> did. Do- he, had a, he had a fantastic season he seems like he's got like a bionic arm too outside yeah. of i mean he just he just restarted his clock getting Tommy john he could play too, another so. three years he could play yeah so years. like you know that sounds really tantalizing i would love that but then of course you know you're you're pairing Max, a 39 year old hurler, with a 40 year old hurler to be like your two horses. And then we saw how that kind of worked out mm. this year. So I'm sure there would be people that would be gun shy about that. But again, it would be a short term engagement. So, and this is a team that wants to win now. And Nathan Avaldi, uh, who I think is, has a great arm. And he oh, that's, pitched, that's who you said that I was yeah. like, oh, that could be yeah. interesting. Yeah, Avaldi yeah. is, is a good pitcher. Uh, he pitched in New York, pitched very well with the Yankees, and uh, obviously had Tommy Johns. And then he went to the Red Sox and destroyed. He was a big part of why the Red Sox big won. Big Yankee killer. <laughs> yeah, why they won the World Series that year. Yeah. So why not bring Nathan Avaldi? And he's cheap. I mean, he's making 17 this year. He, he might make less because this season he didn't play a full season. So bring Nathan Avaldi in. I mean, that he could be a real big piece for their rotation. What, what, yeah, one, one, got, there's some options out there that could be interesting. I mean, I think those few that we've been talking about um, would be good. Um, and dep- I mean, it just really all depends on what Jake wants to do. Yeah. And, you know, where where that limit is for the Mets, yeah. if they have a limit. I, it, I would imagine that there would be. But 
if they don't end up getting good Degrom, because one thing that could be interesting, because we mentioned Rodon too, uh, Manaya, both both of them are lefties too. Manaya might not be a lot because he had a bad season this year, so the Mets might be able to get him cheap as a potential bounce back candidate to go along with Rodon, and then maybe they try to keep. Some Rodon's of their own. the best pitcher available. Yeah, I agree. He is yeah. the best pitcher available this offseason. He's twenty nine years old. He's going to make a lot of money. He's the best lefty available on this list. There are going to be teams gunning for him. Yeah, uh, if I were the Mets, you lose. If you could bring Jacob DeGrom and Ed Radon, you don't need another bat. you got three beasts. Uh, it, 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 <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't be fair, honestly. It wouldn't be fair. Well, I mean, look at the Dodgers. That's not fair. Well, yeah, the Whatever Dodgers, Dodgers rebirth guys like crazy. I was discussing it yesterday <laughs> with my parents. The Dodgers <laughs> aren't winning the World Series this year, buddy. They're not. I, I, I think it's such. it's so funny because, honestly – I, I think they're very talented from top to bottom. I think they're highly overrated. And uh, they had Max Scherzer on the team last year, okay? <laughs> and they still couldn't get over the hump. So what makes anybody think they're going to be even better this year? I I, I, I like their lineup. Their lineup's pretty good. And yeah, Freeman, and Freeman had a fantastic year. Good for them. I, I, I don't think they beat any I, – even if they get out of the National League, I don't think they beat anybody that comes out of the American League. I don't think they beat the Yankees. And I really – I if, if they have a slugfest against the Yankees, the Yankees will beat them. And I don't think they beat the Astros. So unless Cleveland or, or the Seattle Mariners come out of the American League, I, I think whoever comes out of the American League, I still believe, are the favorites to win the whole thing just because of the power that they have in their lineup. And I, 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 it, I think it's Destin, it's Houston Yankees. I really do believe that. I think it's destined, and whatever happens in that series, which there won't be any cheating this time. So, or so uh, we think. <laughs> there won't be any cheating this time. So I, I, I do believe the Astros have the, the more depth in the bullpen with all the injuries the Yankees are dealing with right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but better all the Chapman not showing up. <laughs> if Taon is the guy, because I heard. probably a better thing, though. Yeah, <laughs> true. I, I think that. They're they're thinking about moving Tyone as a possibly closer type of stuff. If they if Tyone, you know, pitches that he throws a hundred miles power if he's is in the bullpen, and he's got good stuff. Maybe that transitions the Yankees. That's enough for the Yankees to get over the hump this year. So we'll see. I mean, it's scary, man. I, as a Yankee fan, I don't know what's going to happen, but. And I, I don't – there's no guarantees they beat Cleveland because I think Cleveland's bullpen is sensational. And I thought after that home run by Quan I, last, last uh, night, I thought – The Quan revenge by the way, tour. By the way, uh, for all the Yankee fans that didn't like that move from Montgomery for Bader, how important was Bader last night? <laughs> mm, very. How, how important he was in the center field position. And Jordan uh, Montgomery's lounging with a And the Chapman. home run that he hit, uh, by the way, that tied the game. Okay, people forget about that. Uh, for all the people that said Brian Cashman has lost his uh, has weighed out his welcome with the Yankees, that was a move that Brian Cashman did. And by the way, where's Jordan Montgomery? Oh, I'm sorry, he's, he's, he's with Aroldis Chapman. He's with Aroldis Chapman, <laughs> not playing anymore. So yeah, they're, those uh, two are golfing with each other. <laughs> good luck. Good luck on that. But uh, the Yankees are still in it, and, the, and Bader could play a big part of where the Yankees go, especially against Houston when it's all about running. And, and stealing bases against a team that loves to do that. So, And if he, and if he does play well that whole series, you'll be able to stick it to Carl. <laughs> oh, I can't wait because he said Bader sucks. <laughs> he said, Bader, what are the Yankees doing? Bader sucks. And I said, uh, he's only probably the best center center fielder defensively in all of baseball. And plus, you, you, get, you move Aaron Judge to his proper position. You just make your outfield that much better. And the Yankees, their strength this year was their defense. People forget that. But, uh, you know. That's that's just what every Yankee fan does. They and I'm a Yankee fan, but I can't stand Yankee fans. They're a bunch of idiots. Did you see last night in in, in the eighth inning? They were the, they were like ah, la, da, 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 da. they thought the game was over. It's four one. I did anybody watch Houston the the game before that and what they did in the ninth inning? Please give me a break. Yankee fans just need to sit back, relax, and hopefully enjoy the show and and. By the way, Garrett Cole put up a gem, and I give him all the credit. He's got to do that every time he's, uh, you know, pitching because you're making all that money, and you have done 
nothing to show. That was the first playoff win he's had as a Yank in two years, making all that money. Outside of that wild card disaster last yeah. year, I mean, he's been good for the Yankees in the postseason. I mean, his four other starts, he's, he's struck out at least eight dudes every single time. He just doesn't win. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's not his he fault. Survived. You he know, survived. like his, I mean, geez, he gets them deep in the game, strikes out a lot of dudes, doesn't give up a lot of runs outside of outside of that, that one start, which obviously looms large. He is the, the home winner, run king this year. Game. He is the home run king this year. He sure is. He got both of them on that team. Yeah, Aaron Judge, Aaron Judge hit the most. Garrett Cole allowed the most. They had to complete the try. They had to, they had to complete it both ways to cancel it the out. Old, Law of averages. <laughs> Don't you love baseball? Uh, how it how it twists and turns everywhere you look. Yeah, the Yankees it's luckily sur- the Yankees yesterday luckily survived the Stephen Kwan revenge tour. Had a chance to tie the game in the eighth inning, but just missed it. Well. You know, Jonathan Lewisica with his big fat lips. I mean, I, my girlfriend was sitting there and listening to me. I was like, you fat-lipped idiots. And I, I was screaming. At, <laughs> this guy is sitting down like he's, he's – every time he pitches, he looks like he's sitting in a high chair. Do you ever see him pitch? He sits down. He, he gets low to the ground when he's ready to throw a pitch. I'm like, what are you doing? I mean, you should serious. watch a uh, Sean Reed Foley pitch. Uh, oh God! <laughs> I mean, what is the last like I, 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 it gets me. It makes me sick to my stomach, man. I, I'm sitting here. She's, she's laughing. She sees me yelling at the TV. She's like, "Who the hell is the fat lip pitcher?" I was like, "The guy on the mound. He's an idiot." I mean, he's sitting like he, he, he's ducking down. He's looking at first base and saying, "Dude, you better not throw to first base. I don't want to see. I, I don't want them to score runs because you're an idiot." Okay. <laughs> And every time he was throwing the ball, it was like inside, outside hitting. And then when what's his name again? Um, when Holmes came up and in his first battery, he hit the guy in the ninth inning. I was getting yeah. scared, man. I was getting really, really scared that something bad was going to happen in that game. But uh, luckily, it, it all it all fell together. The Yankees up one nothing, but that doesn't mean that it's over yet, bud. Maybe Sean Reed Foley will be the next uh, the next relief pitcher to either sign with the Mariners, Astros, or Red Sox to be rebirthed as X Mets. Yeah, <laughs> particularly the Mariners. I want to throw up. Paul Sewell, the Cricks flex it. He's, he can fit right in. I want to throw up. Baseball man makes me sick. <laughs> Anyways. And we keep coming back for more anyways. Yeah, we do. I, I and mean, we'll be here tomorrow night watching the game. Oh, 100%. I, I mean, if there is a game tomorrow, it looks like yeah, it's... Well, yeah, more like Friday. But Yeah, they're going to move it. I, I, I heard that it, it's going to rain all day, and they're not going to take a chance. So I think they're going to cancel it and move it to Friday, and it might be Friday night or maybe Friday afternoon. It depends on how uh, they want to do it and what? how how... How free the field is going to be after the, the pouring rain that we're going to get tomorrow. So. Don't worry. Whatever the Yankees do make up that game, it'll still happen before Noah Syndergaard's next start. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Speedy with his jokes. Anyways, Matt, we really appreciate you joining us, as always. Uh, you're fantastic. Uh, if you guys haven't checked out Matt's stuff, well, then you're not a real Met fan. Check out Daily Dingers and Elite Sports New York. He is as good of a writer. Happy to have him on, as always, for the fourth time. And we'll, we're looking for five. Don't worry, bud. After the, the season old, the is old over. drive for five? Yeah. Oh, we'll, we'll try for more than that. Yeah, I mean, once Carlos, Carlos Rodon becomes a Met after the Giants overpay for Aaron Judge. By the, way, <laughs> by the way, you never showed up. You never even reached out to me about my birthday. I'm very upset at you, man. I was on the boat. Where were you? <laughs> he was in well, disguise. if you were on the boat, I wasn't. I wasn't on the boat because I, I saw you. See, 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 see he, he had a tactic where he ended up ended up time driving. Like before we ever interviewed him, we, we, we had true. him out. He was on the boat the whole That's time, true. just scouting it out. That's true. What else is new? I, I don't know. It, it, it seems like it's my luck, you know. You know, I fight ex NFL players. Hey, I'll come, and then I'm like, where the hell are you? You know. <laughs> <laughs> you never showed up. Oh, well, I kind of got caught up. My wife kept me, you know, get me home. Get the hell out of here, your wife. I tell your wife, she could have came. She could have stripped. I'm just kidding. Oh, I God. Do that. <laughs> oh, boy. This took an unexpected turn here. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's less unexpected than it should be. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Anyways, Matt, we really appreciate you joining us. No, I appreciate it, fellas. It was a lot of fun as always. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll have you on. Very, very soon, as always. But uh, thank you for joining us. We'll keep in touch and uh, definitely check out his stuff. It's it's as good of stuff when it comes to writing and stories for the New York Mets and the Amazings. Yes, and stay clear of the attacks, ladies and gentlemen. That is it. Thank you, Matt. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.